All right, before we go into the coffee break, I just have a few announcements. You just please stay in your seats. Um, when we go into break, there's going to be some coffee, some cake, some cookies, everything to get you refreshed before we start out. Uh, I mean, next... me, me, spice it up, buddy. Yeah, sorry, excuse me? Well, I mean, let's, it's been great, great session, but let's end on some energy. Let's have some fun. Anyone else agree? Hello? Yeah. There's, there's going to... Just, it's just a suggestion. There's going to be an after party later on in the evening, so... Oh, let's party now. We're here at 10 in Prague. Let's go. Are you, are you serious right now? I am so serious. Well, what, what do you want to do then? <laughs> what do you guys think? Let's play some music. Let's play some music. Let's play do some we, music. Do we have any music to play? Or? Yeah, let's play some music. <laughs> You're already here. Do you want to give up? Do you want to give a talk? Or <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you just go get mic'd up and we'll figure something out? That was my talk. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for not calling security. But having an oxygen tank on the side. <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself who you're cheering for in your life and if they really know you're cheering for them? For 29 years, I've been going to sporting events all around the world, patiently waiting in my seat for the right moment, the right moment to get up and do something completely unexpected to change the energy of thousands of people at once. At over 1,500 sporting events, in nine countries, I've stood up in the aisle, danced really badly, <laughs> tossed t-shirts, 145,000 and counting, and done something completely fearless, kind of like I just did. And you wonder why I've been single most of my life. <laughs> I've done this at two Olympics, NFL, NHL, NBA, minor league events, international rugby events, US Open tennis, performing for over 30 million people live. And I've only been hospitalized eight times. <laughs> Hopefully not nine after this. During this time, I've experienced every type of human interaction. I've encountered every type of human being. I've made it my life's mission to engage and to ignite with the best of the human spirit. I do this because we all have our biggest cheerleader, right? I do this because my biggest cheerleader battled cancer and lost. She passed away when I was 17, my mom. My mom was all heart. She wanted to make a big difference in people's lives, and she did. I'll never forget coming home from school one day. She knew I didn't make the basketball team. It was only three years in a row I was cut. <laughs> And she said these words to me. I don't know if anyone's ever said these words to you at that prophetic in time in your life. You just needed to hear it. Maybe you didn't understand it. She said these words to me. Cameron, maybe there's another way you can contribute to the team. And those words would guide my life somehow. I didn't quite understand it. But maybe it wouldn't be my jump shot. 
that would take me to the NBA, rather my optimism, my willingness to take social risks, that would take me to some of the greatest sporting events in the world, and obviously, my sex appeal. <laughs> I'm here today to talk to you about how we can elevate the human spirit and make a difference in people's lives through cheer. The dictionary defines cheer as to shout for joy or in praise and encouragement, to comfort, to support. What do you think of when you hear the word cheer? If we all want and need more cheer in our lives, don't you think we need to give more cheer, right? As I was traveling around the world, I had this idea, I came up with this little experiment. I had made these signs and I would ask these people a simple question on the street. Who were they cheering for in their lives? Their initial reaction was shock, a little freaked out by me. <laughs> and then they had a bit of shyness. And then suddenly it opened up to curiosity. And then uncertainty as they were thinking about who it was. And then you could see their physiology, their state. You could feel the shift in them when they became clear on who they were cheering for and they couldn't wait to express it on this board. Their energy shifted, their emotions shifted. You could feel it. It was incredible. They weren't shaking pom-poms, they weren't doing high kicks, they weren't twirling t-shirts. They were just excited about sharing their emotion with someone they cared about. Let's take a look at a few of the examples from over the years. I'm cheering for our son, Connor. Connor passed away two months ago from leukemia. We don't want any children to have to go through leukemia. I'm cheering for science. Science is the poetry of reality. I'm cheering for healthcare workers in West Africa. We appreciate your dedication and work. There were so many different answers. I never wanted to edit out what anyone wanted to say. One college student said, I'm cheering for my parents because they don't know what I'm doing this weekend. <laughs> I didn't want to filter anyone. I just wanted to ask the question and allow them to feel it, to get it going. So why? Why do we sometimes hesitate to be vulnerable, to put ourselves out there? Fear, right? Fear. But what's on the other side of fear? Regret. And I'm convinced there's no one in this room that likes the word regret, because regret can last a lifetime. There's a great book by author Daniel Pink called The Power of Regret. And in it, his two biggest themes are boldness regrets and connection regrets. Boldness regrets are about opportunities that weren't seized, like you didn't go for that dream job. You didn't pick up the phone and make that important call. Connection regrets are things like family situations, social situations that haven't been nourished or fixed. You didn't call your family. You didn't reach out to your friend that needed you. So how can we minimize those risks? by putting ourselves out there to be more vulnerable, to connect more, to be more bold. How can we do that? What if we gave ourselves permission to cheer like we do in social settings and that confidence we have in more personable ways, where we listen, we encourage, we empower, we become more aware of how we can celebrate, empower, and ignite our community. Imagine this, imagine if we cheered on our friends, our family, our colleagues, like we do our favorite athlete or favorite sports team. I'm not suggesting you go out in front of your brother's accounting firm, paint your face, make a sign, hey Dan, you're killing it with those numbers in Q4, you're killing it. What I'm suggesting is to make simple, straightforward, consistent action towards being there for others. Sometimes the simplest things in life are the hardest, right? Sometimes the simplest things in life are the hardest. I can guarantee you that you will never regret making that connection, being a little vulnerable and sending that cheer to someone. And I guarantee you that person receiving it will be incredibly grateful. About a year ago, I was flying to an event in North America, sitting on the plane, beverage cart rolls up, Flight attendant hands me a napkin and a coffee. I put the coffee on the napkin, had a breast cancer logo on it. I turn around and look at the flight attendant and smile and say thank you. She gives me a big, beautiful smile, 
and says, you're welcome, have a great day. I was stuck in my tracks. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what to do. In that moment, all I could think about through her beautiful smile was my mom. For the next hour and a half, I'm sitting on the plane with these incredible memories of my mom, thinking about how she cheered me on when I was a kid, and it led to where I was going. It all did. All those cheers did. And do I tell this lovely woman my story? I can get up in front of 20,000 people and go nuts, completely sober, by the way. <laughs> but you can't go up and tell the story? Come on. So the plane lands. Everyone gets off. Get up from my seat. The flight attendant walks down the aisle. I said, excuse me, can I share a little story with you? She's like, yeah, absolutely. So I say, this morning when I met you, it just made me think of my mom because my mom passed away from breast cancer and I saw your beautiful smile and she looks like you and you looked like her and it just made my heart full. And she's like, wow. The flight attendants are front, up front are like, what's going on back there? She said, wow, thank you so much for sharing that with me. And then suddenly these tears started to drip down her face. She said, well, my son right now is battling cancer and it's not looking good. She says, you sharing that with me today made my day because I was struggling pretty hard to get out of bed and get on this plane today. In the middle of row 14, she gives me a big hug. I get off the plane, I wipe away my tears, I smile, my heart. I message the airline and I say, you guys hire really well. Those little things, those little moments, they add up. Those grand gestures, they add up. They make a difference in all of us. They help us become who we are. Because in life, the cheer you give is the cheer you get. And this afternoon, I'd like to ask you a simple question. Are you ready to have a little fun or ready to a little shake it up? And are you ready to get a little vulnerable with me right now? Here's what I want to do. I want you to think of someone in your life that you haven't been in touch with in a while. I want you to think of someone in your life that you know needs your support. And I want you to think of their smile, their energy, their heart being more full because you took the time to send them a text, to make a video for them, show up, call them, FaceTime, something to give your energy and love to them. I want you to think of who the person is. I want you to think of how you're going to do it, how you're going to deliver it. And I want you to think of how you're going to commit to it. When are you going to do this? When you have this clear in your head, all three steps, I want you to stand up with me right now when you're ready and clap when I say go. I want you to stand up and clap. Every one of you has the cheer in you. We all have it in us. So are you ready? Think of who the person is. Think of how you're going to deliver it and commit to it. And then stand up and clap. Are you ready? Go. Today, tomorrow, and every day is a new opportunity to be bold and create meaningful difference in people's lives by doing something unexpected for them, something powerful for them, something thoughtful for them, to represent the best of humanity. Let's all open our hearts more and be our true selves. Everyone needs a cheer. So I ask you, who are you cheering for? Thank you.